today's video we will be talking about painful sex i'll be telling you about the classifications the causes we'll be exploring if it's normal or not and also what can you do to help yourself with these symptoms be prepared to give details we want to know when during sex is it at the beginning of sex during penetration is it at the thrusting stage is the pain superficial is it deep is it around the clitoris is it around the lips we want to know all of those details because it will point us in the right direction to try to figure out why you're finding sex painful hi ladies i'm dr simi former surgeon current gp and cosmetic doctor welcome to my channel where we discuss all things skin and women's health in today's video, we are going to be talking about painful sex. Before I start taking you through the causes and why it's happening, I just want us to talk a little bit about the anatomy of our female bits. When I'm talking about certain bits, I need to know that you're on the same page as the bits that I'm talking about. Right, so lesson number one, this whole area here, this is not your vagina. I know that commonly people will talk about this as if it's a vagina. The vagina is actually just this hole in the middle here. Everything else has got its own name. So here you've got outer lips, which are the labia majora, and then you've got inner lips, which are the labia minora. We also have the clitoris or the clit, and then you've got the urethra, which is the opening where you pee from. Lesson number two is that you do not pee out of the vagina. Urine comes out of a separate hole which is just here and it's called the urethral opening or the urethra. All of these together are called your vulva and the space between the anus here and the vagina, that skin in between, that's called the perineum. So now we've got that straight, let's get into painful sex. It has a medical name, it's called dyspareunia and it happens to both men and women but it's a lot more common in women. Pain can either be due to a physical cause, so like a medical condition, for example, or it could be emotional. Your emotions can affect your perception of pain. So I want to start with the physical causes first. Dyspareunia is classified into two types. You've got superficial and you've got deep. And the reason why that's important is because the types actually gives you a clue about what the cause of the pain is. So superficial is pain that is at the opening or the entrance of the vagina. It's pain that you feel when the penis is just entering the vagina and it can feel like a sharp pain, it could be stinging, it could be throbbing and it can affect either the vagina itself or the clitoris or the urethra or even the labia, so the lips. So deep pain is a little bit different. You don't necessarily feel the pain at the entrance of the vagina or when the penis is going in. It's more during sex and it can be felt either high up in the vagina or it can be felt sort of really low down in the pit of the stomach. It's due to thrusting of the penis during sex. I often get asked, but what does a pain feel like? It can be throbbing, it can be aching. If you think about where you feel period pain, kind of behind the pubic bone and inside the stomach, that's where you're getting deep dyspareunia. Okay, so now that we know that there are two types of dyspareunia, we can start talking about the causes because where you're feeling the pain helps to point in the right direction about what's going on. One of the commonest causes of superficial dyspareunia is vaginal dryness. If you are not aroused or you're not excited enough before sex, the vagina doesn't have time to produce fluids and to lubricate itself and therefore sex can be painful. The time the vagina can feel dry is if there's reduced amount of estrogens. Now this happens if you've just had a baby. It can happen when you're breastfeeding. It can also happen to women in menopause. Certain medications as well can actually give you vaginal dryness. For example, there's some antihistamines that can do it, some birth control pills can do it as well. The next cause is vaginismus. This is a condition where the muscles that are around the vagina and also around the pelvic, they basically go into spasm and they are clamped shut. Sometimes, so much so that you can't have sex because the muscles are just too tight. This is something that's actually out of the woman's control. When it's in the severe form, it's almost impossible to put anything in the vagina. Even gynecological examinations can be really difficult because you can't pass the speculum inside to have a look. Um, and even wearing a tampon, that could be impossible. It can be quite difficult to treat, but if it's 
kind of mild or if it's um, moderate, sometimes relaxation techniques, music, anything that will make you relax can help. And in severe cases, some women have counseling and therapy to help them kind of understand why they're getting this and to help the symptoms. The next cause is genital injury. So you can imagine that if you've got any kind of cuts or sores around the vaginal area. It's going to be painful initially when you're having sex. For example, having a cut or a tear during childbirth, or even just something minor like shaving yourself and then having a cut. That can cause superficial pain during sex. The next cause of superficial dyspareunia is infection or inflammation. If you've ever had a UTI, you can feel that as pain that can be around the hole where the urine's coming out of. So this is because that hole or that opening has become inflamed and that's called a urethritis. So during sex there can be friction on this area and it can make sex painful. Another example would be genital warts. So having sores around the kind of vulva can also cause pain when you're having sex. Having thrush, which is a yeast infection, is a classic one that gives superficial dyspareunia. So with thrush, the whole area can just feel or even look sore. So it can be swollen, it could be red. The actual lining of the vagina, the walls of the vagina can be really tender and trying to have sex or even trying to put a tampon in can be excruciating. Next cause can be skin disorders. So for example, eczema, which you typically wouldn't associate with the skin down there. So eczema can cause irritation, which gets worse when you're trying to have sex. Also, there are a couple of conditions called lichen planus and lichen sclerosis, which can cause scarring of the tissues around the vaginal area. And this means that it doesn't stretch as much. So trying to have penetrative sex can be painful. For you women out there who love your perfumed soaps, your vaginal femme fresh wipes and femme fresh soaps and lotions and conditioners, all of that stuff that can irritate the skin around the vagina, that can be enough to give you superficial dyspareunia. A rare cause is some conditions which women are born with that affect the development of the vagina. So sometimes the vagina can be underdeveloped. It might have, for example, a partition. So it makes penetration painful. There is also a condition where the hymen, which is like a membrane that that surrounds the opening of the vagina. Sometimes rather than surrounding the opening, the membrane is actually covering the opening. So it's really difficult to have sex and it can be painful if you try. Moving on to deep dyspareunia. This pain can be due to medical conditions or medical treatments. If I start with medical treatments, surgery to any of the pelvic organs, so like the uterus or the fallopian tube, or the ovaries or radiotherapy for example this can all cause bands of scar tissue which can make everything stuck together so having sex almost causes tension between all of these structures and can be quite painful there are several medical conditions that cause deep dyspareunia so fibroids for example so fibroids are non-cancerous growths of the wall of the uterus and you can have one or several fibroids and they basically make the uterus quite bulky and some women almost have like a mass, like they're pregnant. During sex, when the penis is touching the cervix, which is the part of the uterus that's inside the vagina, it's almost moving the cervix around. And this is quite a strange and uncomfortable feeling and it can, it can present as pain, especially if that uterus is heavier and bulkier than it normally would be. Another cause is endometriosis. So endometriosis is a condition where the lining of the womb which should be growing in the uterus, starts developing in other parts of the stomach. So you could have some on the bowel, you could have some on the ovaries. So sex, when you have endometriosis, can be painful. You can experience really severe abdominal pain. Another cause of deep dyspareunia is ovarian cysts. Cysts are fluid-filled sacs that develop on the ovaries and they make the ovaries more bulky. Sometimes, because of the position of the ovaries, this can actually press on the vagina and sex can kind of move the ovary up and down and around and it can be really uncomfortable. Another cause is pain pelvic inflammatory disease. So what we mean by this is when the organs that are in the pelvis, the uterus, the ovaries, the fallopian tubes, if these are inflamed because they're infected, and this would typically happen in somebody that has a STI that maybe they didn't know about and just went untreated for a long time, the inflammation causes all the organs to kind of be stuck together. They don't move about as freely and sex can be really uncomfortable. Cystitis is another cause. So I talked about urine 
tract infections causing superficial dyspareunia because the opening where the urine is coming out is inflamed. Well, the bladder can be inflamed when you've got a urinary tract infection and this can give deep dyspareunia. Because of the way that our organs are positioned inside, bladder actually sits kind of underneath the uterus. So you've got the uterus here and the bladder will sit just underneath it. Pressure on this area and movement of the uterus can also affect the bladder and it can be painful. Women that experience irritable bowel syndrome, so this could be kind of abdominal bloating, diarrhea, alternating with constipation, they also can suffer from pain deep in the pelvis during sex. So now I want to move on to the emotional causes of dyspareunia. Pain is actually really linked to emotions. So how you're feeling affects your perception of pain and it's no different for pain during sex. Women that have had like a traumatic experience of sex in the past, maybe because of rape or sexual violence or sexual abuse, can find sex very painful. The same goes for women who perhaps are having feelings of anger towards their partner or if they are feeling scared or worried about getting pregnant or worried about their body image. And any kind of negative emotion that is surrounding sex can um, heighten your perception of pain. Suffering from anxiety and depression can also give pain during sex because if you're anxious or if you're depressed it's quite difficult to get aroused which means that the vagina can be dry and then that can give superficial dyspareunia. Stress actually causes you to tighten up your muscles around the vagina and your pelvic muscles so now it's even harder to penetrate and then it causes even more pain. How do we as doctors figure out which of these causes is causing pain for you when you're having sex? I'm just warning you now now, if you are going to see your doctor about this, be prepared to give details. We want to know when you are having the pain, as in when during sex. Is it at the beginning of sex during penetration? Is it at the thrusting stage? Is the pain superficial? Is it deep? Is it around the clitoris? Is it around the lips? We want to know all of those details because it will point us in the right direction to try to figure out why you're finding sex painful. I actually think it's worse for the patient than it is for the doctor because people often feel mortified when you start going into this level of detail about their sexual history. Once we've taken a history, we'll then also want to examine you. So usually we will do a, an abdominal exam examination, so feeling your tummy, seeing if we can feel any masses. And then we'll also want to do a gynecological examination, which is an internal examination. So this will involve inserting gloved fingers into the vagina to try and see if we can feel the ovaries, for example. Do they feel bulky? Are they bigger than they should be? Are you having sensitivity if the cervix is touched? And then we'll also want to insert a speculum. So a speculum is like a disposable plastic instrument that we use, which we insert by opening it up you stretch out the walls of the vagina and it allows you to be able to see the cervix inside it also allows you to be able to look at the walls of the vagina see if they're healthy see if there are any cuts or scrapes or any inflammation so that's all part of the examination that we need to do it's not a painful procedure but of course if you are suffering from for example vaginismus or superficial dyspareunia you might find it a little bit more uncomfortable than normal but your doctor will use lots of lubrication to make sure that the examination is as comfortable for you as possible. Lots of my patients are really anxious when we get to this part of the examination and um, some of them are worried about whether or not the speculum will fit and what I say is if you can fit a penis in your vagina you will be able to fit the speculum in the vagina so don't worry about that. And finally, as part of the examination, we may request an ultrasound. As you can see, there are so many different causes of painful sex that the treatment really depends on the cause. If the cause is vaginal dryness because of low estrogen, we sometimes replace that estrogen by using a gel um, or a pessary that goes inside the vagina that contains estrogen. So this will help with the lubrication. If the dryness is because of not being aroused enough before sex, then we recommend that you spend more time on foreplay or you can use lubricants such as KY jelly. Use water-based lubricants because if you use oil-based lubricants, so for example if you decided that you were going to empty a tub of Vaseline onto the condom, that could be a problem and you could get pregnant because oil-based lubricants actually damage condoms. So stick to your water-based products. If the pain is due to infection, so for example yeast infections or thrush, the treatment would be anti-yeast tablets, creams or pessaries or a combination of the three. If the pain is due to endometriosis or fibroids, 
then we need to treat the endometriosis or the fibroids. And sometimes this can be done with medication and sometimes it requires surgery. When the pain is due to emotional causes, then the treatment is to really get to the root of what's causing um, those emotions. We may, for example, refer you for counseling or therapy. In cases where sex is painful because of sexually transmitted infection, we would do a full sexual health screen. If you are suffering from pain during sex or pain after sex, it's not something that you should think that you should put up with or something that you think maybe only you're suffering from. It's really common. I know that we don't necessarily talk about it as women, even to our closest friends. I know it can be embarrassing, but it's something that you should really speak to your doctor about. We are so used to having these conversations and so used to managing these issues that you really don't have to be embarrassed at all. Bearing that in mind, the other thing I want to say is that pain during sex is not always due to a problem. I'll give you an example. If your partner is particularly forceful, you can get a situation where the penis is touching or hitting the cervix. This will be moving the uterus around and this can feel uncomfortable. So in that situation, there isn't a medical problem that's going on. It's just that it's uncomfortable that the uterus has been moved around. So your partner would have to use less force or just not penetrate as deeply. Some women also find that they might not experience pain unless they're in certain sexual positions. So this doesn't necessarily mean that there's something wrong. So change your position and see if that helps with the pain. If you're noticing that you're getting pain after using certain products, this could be a sign that you're getting irritation of the skin around the vagina or even the lining of the vagina. So stop using those products and see if it improves. And if it does improve, you have sorted the problem yourself. Sometimes if there's an emotional component to the sex, actually talking with your partner can help. So if for example, you're feeling nervous or it's your first time or you're worried about getting pregnant, if you actually let your partner know that you're feeling these things, then you've got it out in the open and it's less of a barrier. That in itself can be comforting enough to reduce that anxiety that's causing the problem. If you have any questions about anything that I've talked about, please drop them in the comments section below and I will answer them for you. Thank you for watching. I really hope that you found that useful. If you have, please share it and I'll see you in the next video.